Welcome to this lesson on motion in one dimension. We know what average speed is, so in this lesson we will look at average velocity and see why it is different from average speed. Nelly tells us more. A moving object changes its position and travels a certain distance in a particular time. There is a special relationship between the change in position or displacement of an object and the time taken for this change. We call this relationship velocity. Since displacement is a vector and velocity is described as the change of displacement with time, we can see that velocity is a vector. Therefore, we need to measure both the magnitude and direction when calculating velocity. Here we see Nkosinati with his trainer practicing the 100 meter sprint. As Nkosinati takes up his position, the trainer sets his stopwatch to record the time taken and gets ready to blow the whistle for the 100 meter dash. The whistle signals the beginning of the race and at that exact moment, the trainer starts his stopwatch. The trainer then stops his watch the moment Gosinati crosses the finish line. Gosinati has taken 11,41 seconds to complete the race. So, we have information about Gosinati's total change in position and the total time taken for this change. Gosinati's position changed by 100 meters from the start to the finish in a time of 11,41 seconds, but his position did not change all at once. It changed by small amounts each second of the race. The amount his position changes per second of the race is his velocity. We find the velocity by using the equation velocity equals change in position divided by the time taken. Can you work out his velocity for the race? Let's substitute the values we have for his change in position and the time he took to run the race into the equation. When you divide 100 meters by 11,41 seconds, we get an answer of 8,76. This tells us that Ngosinati's position changed by 8,76 meters every second of the race. In other words, his velocity was 8,76 meters per second. Notice that the unit of measurement for velocity is meters per second. Meters and seconds are SI units, so the SI unit of velocity is meters per second. We write the symbol for this unit of measurement as m dot s to the minus one. The m stands for meters and the s stands for second. The dot shows the m and the s are separate units, not one unit ms. The minus one stands for per. Remember, this change in position is in the forward direction. You must include the direction of motion in the answer here. So, Ngosinati's velocity is 8,76 meters per second forwards. Notice, his position did not change by the same amount each second of the race as he did not run at an even pace. We do not know exactly how much his position changed each second, but we have been able to work out the average change in position per second, which is his average velocity. We have calculated the velocity when the change in displacement is in the same direction. Nelly will now investigate how to calculate velocity when the direction changes. Now, let's look at another situation we can analyze together. This ball has returned to its starting position in 0,6 seconds. It hasn't changed its position, so its displacement is 0 meters. Remember, to calculate its average velocity, we have to take the total change in position and divide it by the total time taken. This gives us an average velocity of 0 meters per second, but let's do the sum. Thank you. 
and our answer of course is zero meters per second. Notice, because the velocity is zero, we do not have to include direction in this answer. Isn't it surprising that the bouncing ball has an average velocity of zero? We know how to calculate the average speed of the ball using the total distance divided by the time taken, and we found it to be 4 meters per second. Now let's join Nelly as she summarizes what we have learned. Can you see that we've used two different quantities to describe the ball's motion? The ball's average velocity is 0 meters per second. The average speed of the ball is 4 meters per second. So, now we know that when a moving object changes direction, there is a difference in the values of average velocity and average speed. But when there is no change in direction, the values are the same. We also know how to calculate the average velocity and average speed for moving objects. So far, we have measured speed and velocity in meters per second, as this is the SI unit for these quantities. However, in everyday life, we often talk about kilometers per hour, and all our road signs are in kilometers per hour. It is therefore important that we know how to convert meters per second to kilometers per hour, and also the other way around, from kilometers per hour to meters per second. Let's look at an example to show how to do this. Assume that a car is traveling at 90 kilometers per hour. We want to convert this to meters per second. First, we need to convert the kilometers to meters. A kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. Therefore, we multiply it by 1,000 and see that the car is traveling at 90,000 meters per hour. We know that one hour is equal to 60 minutes and one minute has 60 seconds. Therefore, we calculate that there are 3,600 seconds in an hour. Since speed equals distance over time, the new speed in meters per second is 90,000 divided by 3,600, which equals 25 meters per second. Now, let's do the reverse conversion. A Boeing 747 jet can travel at an average speed of 255 meters per second. Let's convert this into kilometers per hour. This time, we convert meters to kilometers. Instead of multiplying, we divide by 1,000. Therefore, we divide the 255 by 1,000 and we get 0, 0,255 kilometers. There are 3,600 seconds in an hour, but since we are now converting from seconds to hours, we know that one second is 1 over 3,600 hours. Therefore, speed is 0, 0,255 times 3,600, which gives us an answer of 918 kilometers per hour. Grade tens, in this lesson, we have discussed average velocity and also learned how to convert units. You'll also find more information about motion in 1D at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Remember to try some of the questions in the task video too. Till next time, goodbye.